A key part of making search usable is making it fast. And if you think about it, over the past couple decades, as you were growing up, search has actually gotten quite fast to the point where a lot of major search providers now do instant search. So as you're typing, it's actually repeatedly doing these search queries and updating the results live. That's actually pretty amazing because during the same period of time, the internet has gotten much bigger. So the internet got bigger, there were more documents to process, um, there's a lot of more complicated content online than there was you know, 20, 30 years ago, videos and pictures. So there's more types of content to search, there's more content to search, and yet search has gotten faster to the point where I can do it now sort of interactively in real time. And that's a real testament to our ability to build effective large-scale systems because behind that really interactive search query is decades of engineering and careful design that allow that query to be that fast. Well, so let's talk about some of that. Um, the, the key tension in this area that's really fascinating to me um, is between two goals. So. The first goal I have when I build any sort of large-scale distributed system is I want to uh, make use of resources. So um, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, I mean, they have to spend lots of money to buy powerful servers, thousands of them. I think Google now has like 9 million uh, servers that it owns or something like that all over the world. So they spend a fair amount of money to buy these servers and then they have to power them and stick them in data centers where they have to be cooled and blah, blah, blah. So that's a huge part of you know the cost of doing business if you're a large internet company. So if I bought those machines, I want them to do something and I want them to be doing a lot. My goal would be, to some degree, if you think about the utilization of the machine, um, I want that utilization to be you know, close to 100% all the time. If that machine is sitting there doing nothing, it's wasted. I spent money, I spent energy, I spent cooling power to have this machine sitting there, and yet it's not doing anything useful, so what's the point? Um, so on the side of making use of resources, I want the utilization of machines to be 100%. The other problem is, but the tension is, I want to keep machines, uh, keep machines from being overloaded. Because overloaded machines constitute bottlenecks. So what's a bottleneck? A bottleneck is a single part of a large system that slows everything down. So for example, let's say you launch a search for a particular term, and for whatever reason, one computer involved in that search is really slow. So I'm pulling all the results from multiple computers, I'm assembling everything together, everything works really well, except there's one computer out there that's taking much, much, much longer than the other computers to participate in the process of returning search results. Here's the problem. You're sitting there at your computer wondering what's going on, seconds have gone by and there's no results and the problem is not most of the computers but just this one computer that's a bottleneck and the problem a lot of times is you know it goes along with this if I have a computer that is very highly loaded all the time if just a little bit changes so let's say that there's some internet meme that starts up or let's say that somebody you know tweets something that causes a bunch of people to start searching one particular thing or someone says something on television that causes people to suddenly have an interest in this particular topic so there was this one machine that was sitting there and it was particularly happy at 100 percent and now there are all these new queries that hit it and now this machine is struggling because now this machine that was very carefully designed to serve a certain amount of traffic has to serve all a bunch of new queries that it wasn't really prepared for and everything slows down. And so this is the fundamental tension here that we spent I think decades working on is how do you design a system that A, makes sure that all the computers that are part of it are working hard and sort of at their limit all the time and at the same time distributes things appropriately so can react to sudden changes in load. So, um, and, and these things, you know, there's been a lot of careful systems engineering that's gone into this, uh, but this is sort of the, the, the fundamental trade-off. One of the ways that you do this is you try to make, um, you try to make jobs a little bit smaller. So if you look at how different things are distributed in various data centers, part of the goal is to make sure that a particular, so for example, let's say there's a spike in the searches for a particular keyword. I don't want that spike to hit one machine. 
I want that spike to be spread out across lots of different machines because if it hits one machine, the probability that machine is overloaded is very, very high. If it hits a bunch of machines, that generates a little bit of extra load on all those machines and the probability that they're overloaded is much lower. So they, just, they experience a much smaller increase in load. So if I can design systems so that a sudden increase in the popularity of a particular site or a particular search term or a particular document or a particular song, let's say I'm you know, uh, building an online music service and suddenly you know, somebody releases a new song and it's super popular, everyone wants to listen to it, same thing. There's this huge load spike. It's very, very specific to a particular piece of content and I want to make sure that, con that spike is you know, smoothed out across my entire data center, across all the machines that I own. I want the whole system to absorb that extra load together. Obviously what's hard about that is I can't predict that. It's very, in certain cases I can. If I have a new hit single from someone who's really popular, I probably want to make sure that a lot of machines are prepared to serve that content. But in other cases, activity online is totally unpredictable. Something happens in the world, there's a, you know, a major event that was impossible to predict, and, and search traffic or internet traffic follows that. Um, and that can be very, very difficult to predict. But to some degree, in the way that we've architected things, clearly search, the performance has improved, Clearly we've made improvements in this area. If you're more interested in this, there's lots to learn about. Uh, and there's some really elegant design principles and some really nice engineering that's gone on um, that have all gone into this problem and this fundamental problem of making search very, very fast.